In this episode of Machine Level HMI with Ignition, we want to discuss proprietary hardware versus non-proprietary. Well, let's start with proprietary HMIs, specifically what we refer to as a panel view. I've hyphenated the name to pull away from strictly Allen Bradley Rockwell Automation. There's a zillion companies out there that make proprietary HMI electronic devices and use proprietary software to develop the screens, to develop the application. With the proprietary HMI, and we'll use my experience with Allen Bradley panel views, you have a number of software packages that you have to have on your development station. It could be a laptop or a desktop computer, but you start out with RS links, and then you need programming software for the controller. Whether it's RS Logix 500, that also includes MicroStarter, RS Logix 5000, Studio 5000, Logix Designer, or Connected Components Workbench for the Micro 800. And I will mention that CCW is where you program panel view 800s, but that's not in today's discussion. You have to have software to program the panel view, factory talk view ME, if you're going to do panel view plus or better. And you start out with 5,000, you write a program, you download it to your controller. I picked a compact logix. It could have been any one of the three platforms that we're playing with. You download your project into the controller. It's running. Everything's nice. You can actually do, you know, simultaneous engineering. You can have somebody developing the HMI while somebody's developing the program because the convention for HMI screens at the machine level is somewhat standard. As long as the person doing the panel view has the I.O. list from the person doing the PLC programming and a general idea of the process, they can get started on the HMI before the, the actual program for the PLC is finished. Then you need to pick a panel view, a specific model, open up Factory Talk View ME, configure it for that specific proprietary piece of hardware. Then in Factory Talk View ME, you create a runtime and you download it to the panel view. I, I do want to point out that you can create a runtime on the laptop but not download it, transfer it to the panel view device. You can actually run it right on your laptop. So you can use your laptop as an HMI. And that's given to you so you can develop your projects without actually having the panel view plus or better present on the system. However, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to download the Factory Talk View ME project by way of a runtime to the panel view. And then before you get away, you have to go into RS Links, specifically Enterprise, and you have to set up the communication because you've got three unique IP addresses here. Your laptop, which is not in play once you commission this project in the field. But while you're developing it, you've got the IP address for the laptop, the IP address for the panel view plus, and the IP address for the compact logics. You actually go into RS Links Enterprise and you set up the communication. Initially, it's already set up between 5000 and the controller to upload, download to the controller. But you need to download the runtime to the panel view. That is another driver, so to speak, that you have to set up. And then once you download the runtime to the panel view plus, and you want to launch it independent of the laptop, then you need the additional communication that you set up between the IP address of the panel view plus and the compact logics controller designated by the double arrow. So you have three unique IP addresses. This is typically the format, the environment, the data scape for a proprietary HMI. Now, all companies do a little bit different, but it ends up being the same basic idea. 
when you walk away, you've got a panel view, plus or better, communicating with a Compact Logics controller or Micrologix or Slick 500 or CCW. But you, this is what you're left with. And at this point, we say it's commissioned. You walked away, the customer accepted it. However, you cannot go online with this device and make edits. You cannot connect to the panel view, go into the panel view, and make edits to your project, to your screens. And that's one thing that sets the proprietary HMIs apart from the non-proprietary HMIs, which is what we're going to do with Ignition Vision. So here's an HMI running on a laptop. This is an actual application out of the manual where we have three conveyors and we are buffering cartons on the conveyors and we have manual mode, auto mode, start, stop, etc. So this is an HMI with Ignition Vision and you're going to start out with RS links because you still have to do everything else. So you're going to have one of these three controller packages that writes the program and sends it to the PLC. And it can be any one of the PLCs. Now, in, the, in my lab project manual for ignition, I, I tried to write it in a way that you could sort out the tags that you would need to use with Siemens or any other brand of PLC. Once you grasp the concept, and of course you're limited to the drivers that ignition gives you in the setup and i don't know that they have drivers for every single brand of plcs obviously they've got drivers for these three right here they actually have two drivers for 5000 they got the enterprise which would have been 20 and earlier and then studio which is 21 and later something like that but you pick out your controller and then on your computer your laptop, okay, the same laptop that you developed your program on for the controller, or you could use a different one, but this is the one that you're going to use to develop your ignition panel view, vision, ignition vision panel view. Go to the inductive automation website. You can see an orange button up there, download ignition. If you click on that and download it, you're going to set it up and then you're going to get to this point where you have a gateway browser open. This it's a gateway browser because it is the gateway between the controllers, the PLCs out there, and your HMI project. Once you've got this open and it's running, notice green, trial mode. One hour, 59 minutes, 43 seconds left because this is going to deactivate every two hours unless you buy a license. But two hours is sufficient for learning. It's annoying once in a while when you have to keep logging in every two hours in some cases. Before you get to the designer, you're going to go into the config over there on the left hand side and you're going to config some drivers. I have three drivers configured. There's a sample device down at the bottom of the list that is comes installed. You can actually create projects and use their sample device programmable device simulator that runs all the time. You can use the tags that are in that to demonstrate some things. And they're active values like timers running, etc. But we're not interested in that. I created three drivers and the type is what you're looking for in their list. The name, I named them that. And the description, I gave them that description. I tried to be descriptive. I would automatically see what I'm dealing with. So I have three controllers connected right now through Ethernet to my browser. I can get tags from all three of those. Okay, once you set up your communication under the config button, then you're going to download the designer launcher. Download designer launcher. And when this comes up, just follow the instructions. Now I'm using Windows on all my computers. Once you get this open, then just follow the instructions. This should get us all on the same page. Remember that my goal to start out with with Ignition was to give you the skills to replace a proprietary display device 
with a standard operating system box with ignition vision on it. 